Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm an airline captain and instructor. And this is Q&A number 14. And we go straight into it. The first is, hi captain. Today I learn about an old approach type referred to as Simplified Directional Facility, STF approach, which apparently is similar to a localizer approach. However, nowhere can I find any further info about what type of technology is deployed for an STF approach. Do you have any experience with STF approaches and an avoid behind it? Thank you in advance. No, I have no experience with this kind of approach. Uh, I search around on the internet. It appears this is unique for United States. I may be wrong, but I never heard about it in uh, Europe or Asia. It's similar to a localizer. It's flown like a localizer. And I think the technology is very similar, but there might be different uh, grades of precision. Um, there is one approach in the United States now. All others have been removed. And this is Morristown in uh, Tennessee. So if you want to fly this approach, you have to get there. OK, next. Hi, Magnai. Another question for you. Can you explain the different uses of the slash key on the FMS, e.g. inserting a discontinuity or adding gusts to the win on the performance page? So this is the FMS in the ATR with glass cockpit. And when you are on the flight plan page and type slash and press the left LS key a beam one waypoint, you will open a discontinuity in the flight plan. You can use this to insert additional waypoints. There are also lines where you have more than one data point and they are separated with a slash. For example, the alternate airport. Normally we enter uh, both the airport and the altitude together. If you enter the airport without a slash, it will go to the first uh, field. And if you type slash and the altitude, it will move to the second field. Airport win has three data points. Let's say the win is 360 at 15 gust 25. You will type 360 slash 15 slash 25. If you want to change the direction of the win, you just type 340 for example. And if you want to change the mean win, you can type slash 20. And this removes the gust automatically. To enter or change the gust, you type slash slash 30. That's how it works. On November 2018, an ATR 42600 made a demonstration flight in Deking, a high altitude airport in Yunnan province, China. The airport's altitude is uh, 10,787 feet. My question is, how did that aircraft manage to take off and land at such altitude without triggering excess cabin altitude warning? Normally you get this warning around 10,000 feet, but uh, ATAR has a modification that can be used, and this will lift the threshold higher up. I think it's 12 or 13,000 feet, something like that. Okay. Uh, Question from a non-pilot regarding that crash in Nepal where someone feathered the incorrect engine. Can we hear your thoughts of the matter? Perhaps there is already a video. Um, the accident in Nepal was Yeti Flight 691. And what happened was that one of the pilots feathered both propellers so they did not produce any power. Um, I made three videos about it, one for the preliminary report, one to discuss the design of the cockpit regarding the conditioners that control the propeller and also the flaps lever. And also one uh, about the final report. So I put links below so you can uh, read them yourself. I'm not happy about the final report because there are some uh, very important information that is not discussed in the report. Okay. Magnar, during departures and approaches, how is the difference in speeds between turboprops and jets being managed, especially in rush hours on busy airports when they use the same runway? Um, yes, turboprops have a less speed during climb, so 
the normal procedure is to give them an early turn to get them out of the departure path for uh, if there is a jet that is ready to depart behind. For approach it's uh, much more easy because below 10,000 feet the speed limit is 250 knots so we can uh, fly and follow the fast jets. But they have to slow down earlier than us. We can keep high speed much closer to the airport. So very often I have experienced that ATC tells us to reduce speed because there is a jet ahead. And when we get closer, it's little opposite. Let's say from five miles and in, we have to fly more slow than the jets. But uh, ATC is aware of that and keep a little extra separation for us. That how, that's how it works. Okay. And here's the last one. So what's dynamic and static pressure? And why the pressure in the top is static if the air is flowing faster? I think you are thinking about Bernoulli's equation and uh, airflow over a wing. Static pressure is the pressure of still air. So that's the atmospheric pressure. And you can measure it with a barometer. And altimeters in aircraft are in fact barometers showing the pressure as an altitude. The dynamic pressure is uh, a fluid in motion, either uh, flowing through a hose or air flowing over a wing. And Bernoulli's equation says the sum of static and dynamic pressure is constant. So if you reduce the static pressure, the dynamic pressure will increase and vice versa. So when the airflow is accelerated over the wing, the static pressure will drop and that is lift. I'm making a video about this and I hope to keep have it ready on Saturday or the following Saturday. So that is all for this time. I hope you liked the video and if you have more questions, please write them down in the comments below. And uh, that's all for this time. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!